So welcome to Hack Miami and OSINT 101. I have presented this before. I went back, I looked through what I wrote, and I was like, wow, a year worth of research in one area changes your perspective completely. So I reworked it, and so we're going to repost it uh, on the Slack channel. And if you want it, you're welcome to it. It's nothing that you won't find on the internet. It's just I tried to collect everything I've researched and put it in one PowerPoint, hence the 35 slides. And actually, I'm a history teacher. That's my day job. So 35 slides is actually kind of small for me. All right, so I'm Honey. Hi, you might know me from the Slack channel. I um, schedule our meetup, so if you ever volunteer for a meetup, I'm the one that's going, hey, 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 you said you were gonna be here. Are you gonna be here? Are you sure you're gonna be here? Please be here. Please don't cancel on me the day before. You're not gonna cancel the day before, are you? You did. Okay, so that's me. Um, I started my official, I started in SE. I didn't know where I fit in information security at all. I just kind of like the crowd, you guys are my tribe, and I, I had to look around and see where I fit. So I've kind of tried a little bit of everything. Uh, my last known place was Hardware Hacking Village, which I, I really clicked with them, so that's kind of where I, I hung out. But I, I found SE and I was like, okay, social engineering is something I'm comfortable with, even though it's really creepy, but I'm good at it, although it's really creepy. And then I learned about OSINT from there when I did the SECTF in Vegas. I did not land one phone call. I was voted the most entertaining flop, and none of my phone calls hit, and I still scored in the top like 30 percentile because my OSINT was like, they told me when I got there, my research was out of scope, and I was like, there's no such thing as out of scope in a real hacking scenario. Like, I had gotten into the building by using the real estate agent that was showing parts of the building, and I had her walk me through with her, show, show, can, can we FaceTime? And she was walking me through the building with her camera. So they said that was out of scope. I say that's not out of scope, but technically it was out of scope. So uh, since then, that was about three years ago, it's been an, ac an active hobby. I can't use it for work. Like I said, I teach history. I'm not OSINTing my kids, because quite frankly, I don't want to know, Ew. ever, what my students are doing. Like, they're high schoolers, and like, worst case scenario, it's going to be like a roll of hundreds and a blunt, and like, or like booty picks. And either way, I'm so good on that. So this has been a very active hobby, but I don't use it for work, first of all, because it's creepy to target children, even though they're probably the most vulnerable of our society, and totally, you should consider them a target if you do if you do OSINT, but I don't like it, it's creepy. So please, if you have anything to contribute, I love to add to my own knowledge. There's no such thing as an OSINT expert because everything changes so frequently that once you think you've locked down a process, something new comes out, a new tool, a new process, Facebook will block that way of doing something and you've got to figure out another workaround. So there's, even the experts who I say, like Bezel will say, I'm not an expert, and I'm like, Bezel, or Basil, however you want to, however he says his name. I've never been to his trainings. So, uh, this is a legalish disclaimer. Um, I'm not a lawyer, and I'm not a legal expert, and I don't know what you're going to do with these skills that I teach you, so I can't tell you whether they're legal or not, and be careful because laws are different in different places, and a lot of social engineering and OSINT kind of borderlines on the fraud world anyway, so you might want to be careful and know the laws about what you are doing with these skills that you are, you, you. Because someone, not me, is going to be doing this. I follow the laws. Okay, so be careful what you OSINT. Um, even port scanning is a crime, depending on where your ports are. So please know what you're doing. All right. Um, it's not the data, it's what you use it for. And please don't use it to be a stalker. No one likes a stalker. Okay, so ways to practice legally. Target companies with broad uh, bounty programs. They'll, they're asking for it, so you might as well give it to them. Um, you can compete in DEF CON. They, those companies ask to be targeted. My company was IBM Security. Yeah, so they ask for it, so it's legal. You, you get a whole dossier of targets and everything. Um, target yourself, stuff you host. Uh, targeting yourself is actually probably the best place to start because you want to know what's out there about yourself. And I have a whole slide about that. And make sure that you're attacking or investigating who you mean to be attacking or investigating. Because if you go at the wrong person, what was legal when you were going at the correct target could be illegal at a different target. So make sure you know what you're doing. Make sure you know 
who you are investigating and make sure that you are responsible with the information that you find. Period. Anybody ever see this t-shirt at DEF CON? I love this t-shirt. It's security consulting kept me out of jail. Yeah. So just, you know, make sure that you know what you're looking at. So what is OSINT? And again, this is a one-on-one, so this is open source intelligence gathering. Uh, why use it? Well, the more you know. The more you know, the more you're able to leverage off of a target. OSINT can maybe give you new attack vectors, tell you something about your targets you didn't know, give you just a broader understanding of the company or the person, or their behavior, or their system's behavior. It's, you're observing. Uh, it can be used in, in every area of the hacking world. OSINT is valuable. And this is probably the favorite quote I've ever come across in my, in my searches about data and, uh, and OSINT. Yeah, it's all just data until you leverage it and then it's intelligence. So, and I really highlight the don't be a stalker part and I know that I'm kind of big on that because that's, that tends to be how people use OSINT in their everyday lives the most. Uh, I remember watching Ace once. He was my first, you guys remember Ace. Uh, he was my first OSINT teacher. And he said, your ex-girlfriend is the best OSINT investigator on the planet because she knows everything you're doing, bro. She knows who you're dating now. She knows, you know, everything. And, and that tends to be what people use OSINT for the most, which don't be a stalker, nobody likes a stalker. And it's not good for you either. You don't want to know what she's doing. He's probably real, real hot. I'm just saying. Okay. So, st oh, steps to OSINT. Um, I have some slides on here. They're just kind of introductory. They're title slides. So we've got steps to OSINT. Step one, set your parameters. You need to know what you're looking for. What type of data are you looking for? Are you looking for phone numbers? Are you looking for dating websites? Are you looking for a person? Are you looking for a company? Are you looking for a structure? What is it that you are looking for? That's where you have to start. And then what information do you have already? Set a budget. At this point, most of the tools that you're gonna use are gonna be free. But some of the really good tools, those will cost you a little money. Sometimes it's just a subscription of 40 bucks. How often are you going to use that tool and leverage that against its price? It's, it's all up to you, what, whatever's best in your opinion and based on your budget. Choose a tool that matches your technical level. Some of these tools are super simple. You just open a website, run the tool, it's good to go, it spits you out the data. And some of these are going to require you to use command line and program in Python and other stuff that, that enters into my realm of not so technical ability. All right. Allocate time limits, that's, that's a new one added because this is a rabbit hole. Every time you find a new piece of data, you've got to run your entire search again with that new piece of data. Oh, you found a hash? Okay, well now you need to convert that hash into every known encryption and then search the hash. Because people use the same passwords over and over. And if it's unique, like if it's like Booty Girl123, there's gonna be a million people with that password. Oh. What, 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 but they can't see me doing that, they just think I'm weird. Okay, so, um, it, but if it's, a, if it's a, a unique password, something unique to your user, something unique to your target, you can run that hash and see if, it's, see if it's in a data dump somewhere. See if they used it on an email address you didn't know about, it becomes a rabbit hole, and you need to dedicate an allocated set of time for that before you decide, okay, I'm tapping out of this investigation. All right, uh, and is it work or play? Because if it's for work, you need to build documentation into your, into your workflow process because documentation is what shows the company that you're working with that you've done your due diligence in what you've presented to them. Uh, I've also heard it suggested that giving an executive summary, like one page executive summary, here were my findings, that can be helpful, and then about one page of evidence per hour that you've worked. That was the suggestion that I've seen on a couple of sites. So, um, all right. I'm sorry I bombarded you with the entire slide at once. If you are going to OSINT, don't hack naked. Don't hack naked. You're going to need a set of aliases and pot. If you can get a whole machine for this, just get it straight up a laptop that never touches your personal data ever, do that. And then never put it on your home Wi-Fi. In fact, you should buy it while wearing a hoodie in sunglasses at night with all cash, period, and like maybe like have a friend buy it. If you want to go like real creepy with it, if you're going to use your own machine, 
you can do things like disabling your USB port and using that just USB port with your VM with a Wi-Fi antenna so that you're never on your own Wi-Fi. Dude, the rabbit hole can go so deep. It's about your level of vulnerability and what you're comfortable with. I never recommend using your own accounts and no one will ever either. Yes? I believe it. I believe it 100%. So that way they're always on that same IP. They're always in that same place. So start with yourself a disposable SIM that, again, you buy in the middle of the night with only cash, wearing your hoodies, sunglasses, that no one knows it's you in a place where there are no video cameras. Go crazy with it. It's the whole point, all right? But that's probably a little too deep for it. Buy a burner phone, put the SIM in the burner phone. Now your alias has a phone number. You're probably never gonna make a phone call from this number, but you'll use it to verify every single account you make for your alias, and Facebook loves that. Their system called Unicorn says, ooh, you have a phone number? You're a people, and I like people. I don't like bots. Bots don't have phone numbers. So the phone number will help you verify. You probably won't use it for much other than verification or two-factor authentication, which is hilarious, because now you're your alias is better protected than most people. Okay, so create a personal information. Who's your target, what are you looking for? And then create a profile that acts as bait for them. If you're targeting a company, maybe disguise your profile as a recruiter or maybe a job seeker. Whatever it is that your bait is for whatever specific purpose you're looking for. Um, people get real deep. You want to create this profiles from IP addresses that are not yours. If you want to spoof, spoof. If you want to spoof your machine address, it's all just to protect your personal, like who you actually are from being seen. Because as we are observing, systems are observing us all the time. And we want to make sure that you keep yourself separate from your professional space. All right. Give the alias an interest. Pick something that you don't actually like or it's going to get weird. Post about that interest. Join interest groups for that interest. Make friends with the people in that interest group. And you've beaten all the algorithms that our social media pages use to make sure that you're not doing exactly what it is that you're doing, which is using their services for information gathering about their clients, because Facebook has enough problems with that. They don't want to make it easy for you to spy or let their users make it easy and then they get blamed for it, which is the real truth. So, um, yeah. Once you have your account set up, set up a whole set of social media accounts for this, link them all together, you have a full profile. Yeah, yeah, you have friends. You have friends, you're real people now. And uh, don't get too attached to this profile because once it's burned, it's burned. So you're gonna spend hours making these attachments, hours making these pictures, blah, blah, blah. When you put pictures, make sure you watch your metadata because there's nothing worse than putting up a picture with your own metadata that kind of conflicts with your alias, insert fake metadata that supports that your alias is who they say they are. Like, you can take it so deep. Um, and there you go. Create your alias, protect yourself. Once the alias is burned, you'll know because your social media accounts will straight up just, sorry, Facebook will ask you to send a driver's license. Hello, Queen Chi Chi, will you please send me your driver's license that proves that you are, in fact, Queen Chi Chi. And when you can't do that, the account is forever locked until you can provide ID, which is where I say sometimes it flirts with fraud because if you want to produce a, an ID for Queen Chi Chi, now that's up to you. But that's, that account is done until it's verified to be a real person. All right, so create yourself a workflow. I have an example of a workflow table on the next slide, but this is just basically a set of processes that you can repeat that have gotten you success. If there's a service that you use that hasn't, hasn't brought you any information in months, take it out of your workflow. There are enough of these competitive services that you'll find another that does exactly the same thing. There are very few uh, brand new services. I think the industry, OSINT uh, and SE in general, is ready for that next, like, whoa, this is a new thing. Because kind of, we've kind of been riding the same services for a while. Um, and a reminder, if it's for work, you want to make sure that you build documentation into your report. And there are some services, like Hunchly, it, it saves your entire research. So every site you go to, everything you click, it kind of saves an archive of that. You know how like when you find something and then you sw it's the best piece of data ever and when you go back to look for it, you can't find it? Hunchly kind of solves that problem. But if you went to 300 sites, Hunchly stores 300 sites. So, but, but whichever one you're looking for, it's in there.
All right, so this is tiny. I recognize that. Sorry about that, guys. We will upload the slides when, uh, when the presentation is over. So this is not my workflow. I did not invent this. You can actually Google Michael Basel. Is it Basel or Bazel? Michael Basel. Thank you. I, I appreciate your like, affirming like choice on that matter. Very decisive. OK, so Michael Basel has a workflow model that starts with every piece of information you might want. So if you start with an email address, there's a workflow model for that. Just Google Michael Bazell workflow email address and it will come up with a workflow that starts with your email address. So this was like gold to me when I first Googled and said like, can I have an example of a workflow process? And I, I typed that in, example workflow process OSINT. And this is what came up and I went, oh yeah. Oh yeah, so I don't have to make all those little bubbles, that's awesome. And uh, there's a couple I've added on here. Hunter.io is great, but it's a big program. You can do the same thing with TrueMail. TrueMail is awesome. TrueMail tells you immediately, like, is this a valid email address? Is this an email address that can accept new emails? Is it on a, a throwaway service? We'll say that that gesture means throwaway. Um, and once you've verified that that is an actual email that belongs to most likely a real person, then you can go ahead and run the rest of the OSINT. There's no sense in running all of these steps on a dead email that somebody used one time to log into Ashley Madison and never checked. Which, if they were smart, that's exactly what they did. But we know, based on the data dumps, that that is not what many people did. So finding, uh, finding dating website profiles has always been kind of a, no pun intended, honey pot of information. Because people put all sorts of their weird kinks on there. And then you can use that as leverage because in our society we totally like frown on kinky sexy stuff so you can use that as leverage to shame your target sometimes. Again, a lot of social engineering sometimes flirts with the unethical. But you're just doing it to make them better, right? They're, they're better protected after you, right? Okay. So. Um, People's great. People will take your email address, turn it into a phone number. You can then take that phone number, turn that into a, a geolocation. You can get their coordinates. If they live stream anything, you can get their, their geo coordinates from the live streams metadata. Um, are there any services on here that anybody would like me to explain? H-I-B-P, awesome, have I been pwned? And it tells you if the email address that you're searching for was in any of the data dumps. And I'm talking like a lot of the data dumps. So all the way back from way before Neopets. Yeah, Neopets was totally one of the first like big online systems that had a huge data leak. Not, not the first, obviously, but one of the first. Hunt that, I think probably millions of email addresses. Yeah, and passwords. So it's all in there. Does anybody, would anybody like me to explain any of these in more detail? Well, again, once you find a piece of information, once you find their social media account, then you've got to go run that email, or run that account. Look for links. Do they have a friend? Are there common friends? Are these real friends? There are services to tell you all of those things. Like, who might they actually know in real life? Maybe you don't want to come right at your target. Maybe you want to make friends with one of their friends, and then you've got a legitimate introduction for when you do meet them in person, because a trusted person will be introducing you, which automatically increases the amount of trust your target will have in you. So this is all like a really, up mind game and uh, the more you know about your target the better you can play okay so tools uh, passive versus active tools some tools give you pretty much almost invisible uh, searching uh, power and some tools go completely ham on your target and they will alert at least their system or their system administrator that you're being looked at they may not know why and big companies get get notifications all day long like hey someone's paying us or hey so that's probably not a huge threat to them, but especially if it's a more localized thing, depending on what you're looking at, you don't want to necessarily alert your target. You, you never want to alert your target that they are being watched because of something called the observer effect, the, uh, the act of observing someone. When someone knows they're being watched, they act differently. Okay, so you want to make sure, and, and your target may not know that you're looking at their Twitter, but Twitter might know. And then Twitter can ban your username, and then your, your profile's out the window. You gotta start again. Tools range in complexity. Some are super simple. Um, Inteltechniques.com is probably the, the industry-wide standard for simple, easy to go to, big bang for your buck place. And then the creator of that, Michael Bazell, 
Then he created an entire operating system called Buscador, which we'll go over a little bit today. But legitimately, when I thought it read Buscador OS, I was like, oh, open source. And then when I started doing my research, I was like, this motherfucker made an entire OS just and I, got, I started like talking it up and getting real excited. And my fiance is like, oh, you mean like Cali? And I'm like, you just ruined it for me, man. You just, you just took this away from me. Uh, and the difference between Buscador and Cali, Buscador comes with this stuff kind of packed and configured. Yes, you can do the same exact thing on your Cali VM. Yes, you can download all these services on your Cali VM. But Buscador is kind of like a one-stop shop. I don't mean to like ride on it, but if you're looking for a place to begin, the GUI is super easy to operate, and it's a one, and it's already configured. So you might want to look into Buscador, or we'll do it today. So uh, tools people love, Maltigo CE, which by the way you can totally download onto Buscador. No joke, right? Um, Maltigo is more for, especially if you've got big targets, but it's 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 a visual representation. If you're a visual person, Maltigo is for you because it's gonna give you a, uh, a beautiful graph printout of all the things that relate to each other and, uh, and you can add to it. It does do transforms and it does do uh, what they call machines, which are basically scripts that people have created or that you can create to run automated techniques. Automation is, is where SE is going, like legit. At this point, there are so many services that automate everything that you're just gonna see further and further and further um, automation in this. And Maltigo makes it really easy to see. I have some pictures for you and we'll play with it uh, at the end as our demo. All right, oh, and it comes, the CE version, the community edition, comes with Kali anyway, so that's always nice. There's a new edition, uh, they have a professional edition at this point, and it can make up to a million connections between people and parts of the organization. So if you have like a huge organization that you're mapping, that the professional version can accommodate that. I don't know, is a million like a lot anymore? It is, but it isn't, it is, but it isn't. Okay. Recon NG, it's another huge tool. This one, it, you need to learn, you need to know Python to do Recon NG. But it's a great, and it, it'll automate everything for you. It's super awesome. Um, and then of course, I, I know that I'm like riding on this like a rodeo show, but he really is the industry standard. Um, I did not bring my OSINT Bible with me because I am moving and it's in a box somewhere along with my hacker laptop. I hope they're together happily because I don't know where they are. Oh, you brought it, yay! So this is the book. Um, why I love text print. Oh my God, it's right there in text print. Why I don't like text print. He updates this book like every freaking year or two and it's like, it's like college textbooks. You gotta buy the new edition every single time or like your professor says no. So, but um, do you mind passing it around or letting any, yeah? Yeah, you're just like, oh yeah, you can, it's totally widely available, but it's great. It's got huge chunks of tools in it. So if you're looking for something real specific, it, it's basically an index of tools and then a, a description on how to use them, which is awesome. Yes, that's an excellent way to put it, an, ex, an encyclopedia of sources. I totally just ate some of my lipstick. Sorry. All right, and then of course Buscador, which we'll be going over today. All right, so this is not a demo portion. These are just a couple of pictures to warm you up for the demos later. So Maltigo is, a, it's mostly graphing and link analysis. It can be used for data mining. Again, the new Excel version. If you want a really great demo, this is one of those, <laughs> it's so popular that there's a hundred of them out there. When you type in OSINT demo, Maltigo is one of the first three choices that pop up and the demos really, it's easy, it's, it's, they'll walk you right through everything, we'll walk you through a couple things. Uh, really, it gets deep when you make it deep, when you use that to, to get to your own research. Um, there's a transformation hub, these are the transforms. I, I wanna transform a phone number into an email address. So there's gonna be a transform for that. And then uh, you can also download third party transforms and the services are wide and broad, as, as broad as your needs may be. You might have to download API keys for this. And again, this goes back to creating that research persona because obviously you're not gonna register your APIs to your real persona. You wanna use your alias persona for those APIs. Um, and then uh, the machine hub just runs scripts. So I wanna run a script to see, pull, pull me all their tweets for the last six months. Pull me uh, all phone numbers associated with this email address. So the machines will run that. They have, and it's as wide as your imagination is, because this is a tool that's been out there for a while, so people have had a chance to play with it. And you start with known information, and you start running your transforms, and 
start running your machines. So this is what the transform hub, you're gonna need an API for most of these, uh, but they're just, they're information warehouses. And each one of them is gonna run 20 or 30 sites. So this is, this is for you if you have not the time to run into like individual OSINT sites because they're gonna use all the stuff you're gonna use as an individual, they're just gonna run 20 of them at once. You're gonna wanna allocate some, some good space of your VM or your, uh, your machine's memory, um, storage, all of it to, to this because if you don't, it's gonna take a while, which I learned on my poor like 1990s laptop. All right, and then here are just some examples. Again, I know it's very small, but uh, one of the machines on the bottom retrieves and expands all RF documents involving their IP address. These are just machines that you can run. I actually don't even know what that means because I'm not that technical, and all my research is into people, but let's say you want every tweet within six months, there's a machine for that. Say you wanna know associated accounts, there's a, there's a machine for that too. So, and these are just some of the examples. There are hundreds of these things out there. All right, and then Buscador OS, you can download it, it is free, it is an operating system. I guess it is also open source, so. Um, and all the tools come configured, they periodically update the operating system, which is great. You can download it into your virtual machine of choice, including virtual machine, and, um, and play with it and go. Okay. Uh, the, in the browsers that it comes with, come with plugins installed. This is not just services, it's plugins too. For example, um, one of the great plugins that I was uh, recommended to use is on LinkedIn. Google has a plugin for LinkedIn. You can search by email address. So valuable, so valuable, it's just a plugin. Facebook doesn't allow you to search by email address anymore. I don't know if you guys noticed that that, has, that feature has been, especially over the last like six months, completely shut down. So the workarounds is you make a page, make a page, and then invite them to be an admin on your page. Not a Facebook page, but you know how Facebook has pages for you to create a service or whatever? Once you start typing in the email address, Facebook will start running. And then if you wanna view page source, view page source will tell you, and eventually, uh, once you continue to type in the email address, you can watch Facebook watching you and it will tell you the view page source, uh, will tell you their Facebook ID, and also, as you're typing in and inviting them to become an, an admin on your page, it's searching for their Facebook profile. So typing in the email just will get you to the profile if you do it that way. But it's only a matter of time until that doesn't work too, or until you have to be a verified member. And furthermore, it's only a matter of time until you will have to clone your MAC address because they'll start to pull from the hardware, like, hey, what's this, what's this? So uh, we're, we're working our way there. And, and I think we're gonna see Facebook become a lot less of a valuable source of information as they continue to get like pwned in the, in the media and with the Senate. Like when you've got Zuckerberg having to make like congressional testimony about leaking huge amounts of data. And then there was just another data breach for Facebook just last week, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the problem with being the apex of the industry. Everybody wants a little piece of it. Yeah, so. Uh, and then this is just some of the stuff that comes with Buscador. As you can see, it's pretty much everything. All right. And this is the, we're coming towards the end of our, of our program here before our demo, how to protect yourself, because I feel like that's kind of important to include. Um, you do not ever want to be on the I'm being investigated end of this spectrum, but sometimes you are. Especially if you like to be outspoken or a complete douchebag, which sometimes I can be, that brings a lot of attention to you, and people are going to want to know, like, Dude, what's her problem? Or what's their problem? And then you become a target. And if you're going to be targeted, there are things you can do to mitigate what you give out. Because, to be honest with you, there are literally hundreds of sites that are buying your information all day, every day. So, run your tools, know what's out there. Good luck opting out. I used to use opt-out as my only piece of information and my only recommendation to how you keep yourself, good luck opting out. It's not, you, you can try opting out all day long. That is a, a motherboard article, and sorry I didn't include the actual like article, but that is an article on how to opt yourself out. And when you go to that article, they will tell you how to get yourself off of data broker websites. And then they're gonna give you 50, get a popcorn, get some snacks, get a drink and get comfortable because that's gonna be the next six hours of your life. Opting out of everything. And if one of them, if you don't do one of them, 
since they all information share each other, your information is just going to go right back up there. And you're going to have to opt out all over again. Because the last time I did this presentation, I went through it. And I opted out of every single, I opted out of white pages, opt out of Pitbull. I, I, I was like, don't say anything about me anywhere. I want to be a ghost. OK. So when I ran, when I OSINTed myself, all my same information is up there. All the same crap that I totally spent like several hours taking down. So I decided that that is no longer an approach that's really worth my time. Now I recommend it for you, especially if a lot of your real good stuff is out there. You want to try and mitigate that. What you really want to do is you want to try and cover it up with a lot of bullshit. Whatever. I'm, I'm a grown up. I can cuss. Um, and this is about perpetuating disinformation. I watched an, uh, an entire, or listened to an entire podcast about the difference between misinformation and disinformation. Yeah, the difference is intent. When you purposely put fake shit up on the internet, that's called disinformation. And that's probably the best way to prepare yourself, or to protect yourself at this point. Create an alias that lives at your address. Order magazines from that alias. If you can make small purchases from that alias's name, and that way, your address doesn't show up as nobody lives here. Because that looks weird. When you don't have social media at this point, it looks weird. When you don't have an address on the internet, that looks weird, because everybody does. So create a fake person that lives at your address and order a couple magazines, and then know that the magazines share all your information. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna perpetuate that disinformation for you by selling all your shit, or selling your aliases shit. Um, and then you're gonna wanna make sure that your, your alias has a gender neutral name, if you can just use initials, just use initials. That way, if you've got a call up, or if your wife's got a call up, or your friend's got a call up, you know, it's really hard when I make calls for George. But if it was just G Washington, hi, I'm G, or you could pick just any girl's name that begins with G, and it will work. So it's, that way you're giving yourself opportunities, because sometimes, and I know this is a gender biased world, sometimes females will have success where male SEs won't, and vice versa and it has everything to do with our cultural biases about gender. Exploit those. We know they exist, exploit them. And try and pick a, a persona that's as low key as possible, because that's its goal. Uh, you can even make online purchases with gift cards and, and Visa gift cards from the alias's name. You can trust that your information will totally be sold at that point, because now it's even more valuable because it comes with a credit card number. Uh, sign up for services that will sell your info. Any, any wedding registry, target registry, any wedding registry will share your info. They all share it with each other so that they can all market to you directly. Use that. You know they're going to perpetuate it. And then make sure that you uh, put some stuff up there with your real name, a real blog with your real name. Put fake interests. Put a fake city. Make sure that whatever, whatever your name is attached to is as least like you as possible and your alias gets... Um, all the credit for being at that address, at that location. Um, these are all ways to just fill up the internet, start a blog under your real name, talk about loving cats and cat videos. That way when people Google you, they're not gonna find like, oh, this person was totally publicly fired or God forbid someone posts your revenge porn or something. It won't be the first thing that people find. They'll find other stuff. And that includes posting public videos, public, if you can post a PDF, PDF files, People can search specifically for PDFs, so put something up there that's worth finding. Make sure you, make sure it's what you want to perpetuate, okay? All right, um, and if you can buy your domain name, like your name at your domain name, like do that, and then put some stuff up there that you want people to see, put your accomplishments, the things that you want to be public up there. All right, uh, compartmentalize your real life accounts. Um, and this is really up to your personal levels of, of vulnerability and what you're comfortable with, because some people have one email address for their bank accounts, one email address for their social media accounts, or each social media account has its own email address. That is like true compartmentalization. And it just, it isolates you from being found. It makes it harder. It adds that many more steps to the process of finding you. Um, make sure that you have public accounts that you use, because again, when you don't have social media, it looks weird at this point. And then make sure that you have private accounts for your friends, for your real opinions, just things that you wouldn't want your employer to see or things that you wouldn't want on the news. Try to, to make separate accounts that aren't linked to your name. And then, of course, your fake research accounts and your aliases. Um, the scenarios are just up there from the previous presentation. Some of them get real, 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 real deep. You're welcome to take a picture. Uh, one of them is a scenario about pen testing. I did not make this scenario. This workflow is not mine. The OSINT professional who made this workflow what is not allowed to present because of his company's rules. 
So what he did is he made the workflow with me. We already talked about hacking the humans, so I'm gonna go through that. Hootsuite is awesome. They're a paid service most of the time. They'll tell you who's looking at you. So if your alias is getting a lot of attention, they'll tell you from what kind of people, from, you know, Hootsuite's awesome. Uh, Follower Wonk, again, analyzes Twitters. These are all really great. It depends on what you're looking for. Uh, so this is that slide. If you want to take a picture, I wanted to give you an opportunity. But the real, the pen testing one is the next one. And you're uploading the slide deck, right? I am, up, I am okay. totally uploading the slide deck. Yeah, but you know what? I, I teach, like I said, and I do a lot of presentations. And even though I put my PowerPoints on my website and the kids can totally download them whenever, they still want to take a picture of everything. So I'm like, I just have resolved myself to not give a fuck about that at this point. So if you want to take a picture, rock out. Make sure it's put up on the... Yeah, I'm mean, trying not to get me because I'm super shy, and like I said, I'm a, I'm a public school teacher, and I don't necessarily want my name associated with like, hi, I'd like to tell you how to creepy stalk people, which is essentially what this is in a lot of ways. And again, some of these services uh, for pen testing, they are not legal in all areas. What you do with this information is uh, that's on you, bro. So make your choices and know the laws that you are violating because I don't run these tools. Someone, not me wrote this slide, yeah. someone who isn't me, excuse me. And then once you get that information, once you get that new stuff, you run it all again. Oh, you got a new server? Okay, now you're gonna run that. What's it related to? Oh, you got a new email address? Some of the coolest things, like if you find a company's PDF, look at the metadata, see if the author's name is on there. That gives you someone at the company who's has privileges to post things online related to the company, like documents. That's an important name. That's exploitable. I know you guys are waiting for the, for the uh, demos and the, uh, oh, and then threat intelligence also. This is another professional that is a regular at Hack Miami, but they're not allowed to present because of their job, but her job is threat intelligence. That's what she does. And she says one of the best things that she does are the RSS readers. The, yeah, just, if you're looking for something specific, if you're looking for threat intel, it'll give you, you know, a set of hashtags that you set aside uh, beforehand and it'll just give you every, everything that's on there. So TweetDeck is cool too for that. Um, you get to customize what you see. TweetDeck will also uh, allow you to automate your tweets, which Twitter itself doesn't let you do anymore. I gotta make sure TweetDeck still lets you do that because they've been trying to eliminate that. That's another great way to hide hide you from some things that do analytics because that way if you're being targeted they don't know you know okay this time they're posting at 4 p.m. tomorrow they posted at like 3 a.m. so if the tweets are all over it's harder to analyze what's going on with it. yeah totally Who, what what do they let you automate to Hootsuite has become like a real baller kind of tool yeah it lets you do it. That's what's up, yeah. Yeah, I'm at the point where I need to do a complete, like, SE slash OSINT rehaul of all my media and all my bank accounts. Like, it's, it's like spring cleaning. You've got to do it once every few years and just, like, change all your passwords or, or get, get a password manager, for God's sake. Like, at this point, or just write them all down and keep them in a book and make sure they're, like, 128 digits long or whatever, you know? I don't know how deep you want to get with it. That's true too. That's true too. And dead accounts are a gold mine. Mm. In one month. Yeah, dead accounts are a gold mine. If people have forgotten about it and you can and you can leverage that, then I mean in so so many ways sometimes you can adopt the persona of the person that you're that you're I don't know, it's a creepy skill. <laughs> and then, of course, threat intelligence on the Hack Miami Slack. So, sorry about this. I know I teach history and I should do better about my citations, but I don't have to, so I didn't, and that's that. Yeah, so these are, again, this is just, this is not the product of, the products of my research are actually the products of other people's research, so I wanted to give you where I got my information. I just found out about Bellingcat. I don't know where I was and why my head was like up my arm behind, but like Bell and Cat has so much really good stuff. And so I put it all up here for you. Uh, and again, uh, I left the links in there so that when you do download the PowerPoint off Slack, you can just click them. 
That's why I didn't convert this into a PDF so that it's still got the clickable links because like if I'm going to throw links at you that are six lines long, at least not be impossible and let you click them. But yeah, that's pretty much it. There's entire GitHubs dedicated to OSINT, OSINT tools, OSINT trainings. Please don't pay for training at this point. You're not going to get anything that I didn't give you here unless you go really deep and pay for some really good trainings, like one day trainings. How was the, the training at B-Sides? I heard it was decent. Did you go or was that the different Michael? You did not. Oh, not that Michael. Not that Michael. Different Michael. But yeah. again, there was nothing in there that we didn't already have access to. Yeah, so. and it's it's great to, to brush up on it, especially because like, yeah. I mean, a fifty dollar OSINT class. That's that's fucking awesome, man. That's like that's like B-Sides being awesome as they always are. Like they're one of the groups that I try not to cheerlead or anything other than Hack Miami, but I super love B-Sides. So super love B-Sides. Did you go to the OSINT training at B-Sides? No, different Michael. Wait. Oh, Vinny, did you go to the OSINT trainer? Uh, no, it was a... Uh, How was it? It was good. It was Joe Grace. Oh, that's what's up. Uh, so sick. My favorite uh, SE one was the guy who ends up in the bank vault. Do you guys remember him from last year's Hack Miami? Do you remember his name? Dude, that dude was so sick. He ended up taking a selfie from inside the bank with the money in his hands, and he goes through how he SE'd his way all the way up in the vault. And I was like, oh. I was so interested in watching that. But um, there was another there was another chat just very recently. It was at 4 a.m. this morning, so I hope it's recorded somewhere, because obviously I didn't wake up to listen to that. But it was uh, OSINT for uh, news organizations and how news organizations can use OSINT tools and OSINT in general to make sure that they're fully covering stories and getting all the information they can to present to the public. Can it be Cumberbatch? Because I have a thing for this other guy named Cumberbatch. Josh, 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 Josh the dude with the awesome talk. And I'm telling you, I like, I, I fangirled so hard at that talk. I was like, yeah, 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 he's the fault. Like I was like into it hard. So if you ever get a chance to see that, that was, that was just one of those times where you just cheer for the bad guy so hard because I wanted him inside that vault. And you knew from the very beginning because he tells you, I got in the vault. This is my picture with him. And then he just walks you through how he got there. And it was so, it was beautiful. It was like every piece was orchestrated perfectly. Um, I went to a great OSINT uh, talk at Besides a couple of years ago, Besides Vegas where she talked about using OSINT as a nation state and how OSINT and perpetuating disinformation can cause interruptions in elections and all sorts of stuff that, you know, we in the United States wouldn't know anything about. Never, 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 no. So um, this is the end. I have, do we have one more? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is it. Yeah, two more slides. Yeah, one more. No, the last slide is a is an example, um, and those go right to Rod, by the way, for those of you who are uh, going with me on that journey. But uh, this is Rodaris. Rodaris is one of those paid data miner services. So remember how I said good luck opting out? This is everyone Rodaris, and this is what they tell us, and it's been more because again, this is a year ago worth of research. Uh, this slide specifically. These are all the people Rodaris, just Rodaris sources from. So unless you pull your name out of every single one of those services, they all will, they're just going to share it again. They just search, they scrape each other's sites all the time. So good luck opting out. I think perpetuating disinformation is probably your, your, best, your best bet at this point. Cover up what you don't want people to see and highlight the things you do want them to see and make sure that you know the difference. Yeah. All right, cool. You ready to, are you ready to demo now? I have a virtual uh, the virtual machine, virtual oh. machine for. Let's see. So turn this on. Do you guys want to group sing Moana while he's? Oh, he's done. Maybe later. And this is why I don't like live demos. Because have you thought about who we're going to target yet? Who wants to volunteer? Who's got a dead email address with something that they think is dead? No, yeah, that was... 
just for those of you on the interwebs, that was a resounding silence right there. So this was That was their one Ocean talk. I was so salty I missed that. What? Really? Dude, LinkedIn is the worst, man. Yeah? Do you remember? You know what? I'll look it up on their... Uh, because they still had their, last time I checked these sites, Miami had their schedule up still. So maybe it's attached. Because they had one or two really good OSINs things. Yeah. Right. Right, yeah. I looked over their schedule. I don't remember. I think I was still in the hospital at that point. But like, I heard that talk. Was like, mm -hmm. Without you. I believe it. LinkedIn is the worst. Because LinkedIn is also one of those... If you Google the name, the first thing that comes up is the LinkedIn profile. I, I, it took me even a few minutes to figure out how to block people on my LinkedIn. I'm like, this should not be something that the service makes so difficult. Like, this is one of those things, like, you should be able to. But LinkedIn, by nature, is designed to put you out there. It, it, that, you, you can. You control what information you put on your LinkedIn because, because you're in the hacker world, man, and because you know better, but not a lot of people... People are still uploading resumes with their names and addresses and phone numbers. And this is just not that day anymore where you want to be able to connect your name to your address to your phone number. So like if you still have resumes, like I do, you could do, the, I mean, I would just, I would just in many ways just take all that stuff off because it's not like they're going to mail you anything without interviewing you first anyway. So since the, in my opinion, and, and I recognize, true. Right, I, and I get that. So it, they make it really hard, especially uh, if you're on one of those old job recruiter sites. Like if you signed up years ago at job recruiter sites, yeah, they've already sold your resume like 10 times over. Your address is all out there. The best thing you can do is perpetuate. In my opinion, I keep saying it, is to perpetuate enough, enough disinformation to cover you if you care about what's out there. So. All right, so for setting up the VM, it was pretty much... Uh just follow the instructions right on the on Intel uh, Techniques website. Intel Techniques website. Step just by step directions. Basically step by step for real. It, you install VirtualBox on your on your system, import the v, import the OVA, and just follow step by step the instructions right there, and you'll it'll be working mm -hmm. practically flawlessly. All right. Again, make sure you allocate system resources to the the box that you're using. The more you the more you allocate, the faster these things run. Because some of these searches are like set it and forget it, and you come back in a couple hours. I guess a lot of hacking can be like that. So. Yeah, get comfortable. Get comfortable with your hoodie and your sunglasses. So. So I think yeah, Maltigo is installed right on right yeah. on there. So yeah. just running. It really is a one-stop shop at this point. Bazell has kind of pinioned himself into the the OSINT slash SE experts. And who's the guy with the lock picks uh, as a card? Michael Mitnick. Mitnick. Kevin Mitnick is the other uh, SE that's just like, oh, you know. So, so if you're looking for places to start your research, start there. And, and then down the rabbit hole you'll go because it's so... When I did the SECTF, I mean, I found these people's kids. I found where they were enrolled in school. I found their gamer profiles. Not the kids' gamer profiles, but the, the professionals. I found out where they were eating lunch together. I found out what kind I mean, like, this, and this was all open source. I wasn't allowed to go to the site. I really thought about driving to the site, but it was against the rules because it was just Atlanta. I just wanted to hang out in the restaurants less than a mile away from where the sock was. And after a week, you'll get lucky, because at some point, they're going to come in. Who wants to eat Taco Bell every day? Nobody, right? So just sit and so, wait. So a they lot got, of SEOs in his patients. So they have a lot of um, social tools, so you could just pull up some Twitter to scripts right here, right? If you click on the Twitter icon, they have other tools as well. So that you could just select the particular tool you want to use. I'll ask you for a Twitter account. Let's see. 
Twitter requires um, API. But you set this up already, right? Because no, you need to be logged it. into a Twitter account to search Do it. Do you have to? Uh, I haven't set it up. I just this is just yeah. first time, first time running it since I got mm -hmm. got it. So yeah. just going through the the tools menu, you have like uh, video download tools, video utilities, mm -hmm. bunch of uh, different browsers that are already pre-configured for you. Yeah. Firefox, Docker Cycle. Mm -hmm. If you find something super cool. juicy, download it because it won't be there tomorrow. Yeah. People, uh, people like if they if, if they drunk post at three o'clock in the morning, you're gonna want to download that because that's not gonna be there at eight a.m. the next day when their coworkers see it. It has Recon NG built in right there. You have to set up all your API, API keys, keys for re, for Recon NG yeah. and stuff. Yeah, and remember those go under your alias names. API keys are are the service saying, okay, we recognize that you'll be doing some research on this account, and we are acknowledging that we won't flag your account unless you do something really naughty. Which again, your research accounts don't get attached to them. If they last more than a few months, that's like gorgeous, because. As soon as it's found out to be a research account, they ground them. And once the one is grounded, you might as well throw the person that away. There's a lot of little metadata tool in here as well. So. Well, let's pick a picture off the internet. Let's let's do. Uh, you want to target? I wonder if Rod is listening. Rod, are you listening? Can we target Hack Miami? Is that an Alex question? Alex, are you listening? Can we target Hack Miami? Would we really want to know what we find? There's a 30 second delay on the video stream, so he won't listen to it for. Okay, well, someone's got just got that. The thing that uh, Basil recommends is uh, set up your machine, get it good, clone it, and use a completely fresh distro for every, every time. Engagement. Yeah, you're going to want to spin up your, your VM every time. Uh, and that just compartmentalizes and keeps your research aliases safe, too. And then you don't have to set it up. Right, clone right. It. You just. <laughs> Done. It's like a game. It's a game save. You save your game at exactly the point where you're about to make a real stupid decision. You're like, let's see how this goes. And if it doesn't go so great, reload, man. Aren't you bold, sir? No, 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 Blue Fox. Aren't you bold, sir? Yeah. Let's uh, let's do this. Cause I was right. gonna target Honey's uh, my Honey email, but it's. I don't want to give you something I know nothing's attached to because they'll just be like, oh, this person is attached to the, the meetup page for Hack Miami. And you'll be like, okay, well, we've confirmed a known known. Great. All right, so let's see. Can we I talk? agree. There you go. Well, false positives are a thing, which is why you got to always recheck. Again, like you got to make sure you're attacking who you think you're attacking. Bye. Super cute. So, all right, so let's see. What was his email address what was again? Your, what was your email address? No, no, he said his email address, bro. Well, here he posted to uh, bluefox1025.email uh -uh. or cooldude115.yahoo. Let's see if his birthday really is 1025. Yahoo. Yahoo would be easier. You, if you have a, a... Too bad the email servers haven't been breached, man. But you'd want to look for him in a breach. Look for the... That's that's one of the like eye-opening things for me. There's nothing the user can do about that. It's not them who, who breached their information. It was their service. There's nothing they could do to protect that. And if they're not in the know, they might be still using that same password. All right. So where are we going? With the, uh, where do you want to go with the... So that's the email address. So let's try transform. Wait, where, so, where are we? I can't. So where are we? So... I don't think I could do any transforms here I didn't and set up a login to Altigo. Let's so. throw it through Intel Techniques. You don't need anything for that. Where you go? Mm -hmm. it's, it's not letting you run Buscador. the view. Oh, you want to do the Maltigo. No, but this is the Oh, okay. So go ahead. No, 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 no. You stay. I like it when other people type for me. All right. Here's the transforms up at the top. Clearly, I'm too simple to use your. Uh, I think the transform hub, but I didn't. So. Let's try a machine then. Let's go. Oh. Transform hub. Ah, I have to log in. One second. I mean, uh, close this. I won't Let's look, go. I promise. Oh, the joy of live demos. Mm hmm. Thank you for waiting. We're having technical issues. 
be right back with you. This has been a message from Hack Miami. There we go. We just used the Maltigo from Coyote. So. Oh, that's what's up. What do we want to do? What do you guys want? I told you I, I'm super into Moana. No? Ugh. It's kind of my goal to get the entirety of Def Con singing a Disney song. One day, I'm telling you, I'm going to find the opportunity. And when I do, we're all going to be singing Let It Go, 20,000 Hackers Strong. It's going to be amazing. Gorgeous. Right. So I can see, okay, there was a film on intent that could have been anything. There was a film on intent with the correct, the correct combination. Look at you setting things little things honey pots. Things. Look at you. Someone who's looking at you. Or. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I'm trying to. All right, that's, that's super awesome, yeah. Alright, so. Right, right. so which transform would you like to run on this email? So let's see. Let's look from data leaked from sources. Email data. People, mom. Um, no, this is a, a. Okay, so that's. This one doesn't have any transform. Much transform. Yeah, but you gotta put the email address in there. Let's see. Ten twenty six. What was it? Ten twenty seven. Blue Fox. Ten twenty five. Ten twenty five. All right. So where we go here? There's no transforms. Uh, really. lost mm. I'm not seeing any transforms on this one. I know this one works because I have all this one. Oh my God! He's just like, take it all. Just run through all of the transforms and let's see what it all. Hey, look! We're finding stuff. Well, we're not. Maltigo is finding stuff. Did you sign in with the Paterva account? Hmm? No, that's probably a no. Because Paterva, um, that will give you access to like Intel techniques or uh, some basic sites that you don't need. Oh, yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I set it up beforehand, so. So what do we get in here? <laughs> That's what I, I signed. I, I, I set up the demo beforehand before. The, the, the other screen was for um, uh, Buscador. I didn't set up my, uh, the Maltigo account on there for, or Perturbo, Perturbo. whatever, whatever they're. Yeah, Maltigo is Perturbo. Yeah, yeah Perturbo. What did account. we get? Because we definitely populated some stuff. Yeah, uh, let's see. So we see some Ashley Madison. Uh, oh, okay, so these are the breaches. Records. Yeah, so there's a lot of breaches in there. So So we would just have to search each so one. So we could see. Or it should search for us. I know if we delete, we close them. Let me delete that. And then we could see. We go to. Actually, if you click on one of these, I think it shows some details. Properties shows the Gmail. Mm. One thing I don't. The one thing that. What happens when you click on this? I don't have the account set up for. The, I don't have their. The people mon set up. All right. Can we go to a browser? Mm -hmm. Oh, do you still want to do the Maltigo demo? Because sure, I think if you we're going to go to a browser. We could do that. So. Go to IntelTechniques.com. Let's put his email in there. Uh, okay, so go ahead to. I'm gonna move this one to. This one to eight, nine. There we go. 
Go ahead. Right. Intel Tech could. needs to. Oh. Sorry. No, you're fine. You're fine. I'm just being lazy. <laughs> All right, so this is the um, IntelTechniques.com website. Um, I'm not really super loves uh, live demos with Maltigo, which is why I always have someone else do the live demos. But this one, it's so easy, even I'm willing to do it. So you just go to Tools, or I'm going to try to go to Tools. Yay, Tools. All right, and then here you have on the side, this is the target data. This is a touchscreen? It no. is not. Not that old. It's, it's very old. We love touchscreen. I'm so used to the trackpad tap to select that when I have mouse buttons, I'm like, what is going on here? Oh, are they taking you right to, right to, hey, download Buscador here. All right, so you can use the populate all button and then it will populate all. It's one of those things. Fox 1025 at gmail.com populate all. All right, so have I been pwned preaches? Hashtag not my laptop. What? Are you going through VPN or something? No. no? Uh, it's uh, cool. No, because you just went there. So. What do you mean I went there? Oh, that's right, duh. Uh, oh, did you block all my pop-ups? You blocked all my pop-ups. Oh, Firefox prevented 21 pop-ups. Okay. I'm uh, Come on, allow all. It'll be okay. No, no, allow all. Oh. <laughs> It'll be okay. You can do it. I don't use that. From the, where's the where is our oh, Hunter I.O. Uh, oh, God it damn. says verifier in big old letters. Uh, that's just We're currently experiencing technical, technical difficulties, difficulties again. Uh, or the preferences. There we go. Oh, is it here? It's on yeah. the yellow bar, too. Yeah, yeah. It was there? Yeah. So we're going down here? What was the pop-up blocker settings on this thing? Was, uh, I don't, I don't go into this thing, hmm. settings ever. Can you go to the OSINT search tool thingy again? Uh, Good job. And now we wait. <laughs> okay, some of them are popping. Oh, Gravatar. Okay, so I really don't under... I, I get Gravatar. I know what Gravatar is. But, like, God damn it, I don't understand the purpose of Gravatar. Because it, you can make an avatar that's a global avatar. Gravatar, I think that's kind of, like, their idea. So that whenever you use your email, your Gravatar uh, pops up on sites that have a Gravatar friendship. I don't know. I don't understand Gravatar. It's so, I'm like, why would you want that? But they're a legit service with like millions of subscribers. I'm like, but why would you want that? But oh. they're a legit service with millions of subscribers. So clearly people want it. So. I hope he didn't give us a bullshit email and is now like sitting there drinking a Pepsi. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> good luck, chick. Oh. Yeah. I really oh, hate oh, this oh, shit. Oh, All yeah, right, yeah, yeah. For, forget that oh, one. Oh, no, but people are so good. <laughs> Bullshit, man. Yeah. yeah. People, people is the bomb.com, man. But you're gonna have to click on some traffic lights. All right. So here so. we got just. Mm. All right. Oh, the other yeah. thing is when you're searching for email addresses, first you go through the email address, and then you go ahead and you drop that domain name, and then you search it again as a username. So it yeah. would just be Blue Fox 1025 instead of Blue Fox 1025 at Gmail because people love to. We're creatures of oh. habit. Information found. All right. Oh, yeah. 
And again, if that password's been breached, if you can get the plain text password, great. Search for the password now, because maybe they have other email accounts where they use the same password. If it's in a, a hash, search the hash. Then convert the hash to a to right. SHA or any other encryption, and then search, 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 search. This, this search. is the verifier, yes. Yes. This shows you whether or not it's a decent. Loves this. Okay, so this is actually a good thing. Believe it or not, this is Intel. Yeah. So. Is it a valid format? Yes, the email is valid, but we already knew that because we know at gmail.com. Is this a deliverable mailbox? Is it full? No. Um, the catch-all, I'm not sure with that one. The host exists, it is a legit. And this is for like email addresses that are not Gmail addresses, obviously, because Gmail, you know the host exists. But if it's at like, I like toes123, maybe that's not like a, that's not a legitimate web service email name so this will tell you is this a legitimate email address so now that you've proven that this is actually an email address that someone probably used because it is deliverable it isn't full this is something that you can now continue to research and you put it into the next and you put it into the next service and go yep. so what do we got next no that was it the rest of them are pretty bare pretty bare And domains owned by them? Mm, no. Details, no. No domain. You want to search again using just BlueFox25 and see if it's a username anywhere? That won't go in the email tool. That will go in the username. Uh, yeah, we could just do, I think it was right Google Dorking is also pretty awesome. Believe it or not, you can also get a Gmail or Google API so that you have... A, it's not a permission from Google to use their services to search, but it's a higher level of permission to use their services to search. So we could do... Uh, username or, oh, huh, well we could do real name, but let's let's not put that on on the interwebs. Mm -hmm. So username tool. Mm -hmm. And a lot of this becomes like, me not being able to scroll. Um, how creative can you get with it? He doesn't use this email, he uses different ones. <laughs> Good, I hope he doesn't give a bunch of hackers the email he uses for his yeah, banking for real, account. Yeah. Like, we love you, bro, and we didn't expect this to be a real uh, significant, like... Real thing. I, dude, Which your mouse you pad is making me, like... Oh, you you gotta, I think you have here. to click on them uh, one by one. Where's Let's try the purple. Submit all. Where's the middle? Oh, pff. that was just me being me. It was just like a blonde moment. Like it said clearly, it's clearly said submit all everywhere. Okay. No gravatar. No gravatar. That's just a womp womp. Womp womp. Uh, no. Hey, womp, womp. wait, 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 wait. Oh, oh. Hello. Oh, oh, oh. Hello. That's an Instagram account. That's Intel. See, bro, this is why you don't give people. So you are now. What's up? Now we can be friends on Instagram. I don't know what my Instagram passwords are. I shouldn't admit that I'm really bad on social media because, like, as someone who researches, you should be like, nah, man, I'm at the top of my game. I actually, I don't have a Snapchat. I don't have an Instagram. I think I do, but, like, I don't use them. And that in itself is Intel because dead accounts can be leveraged. If you assume that account, I'm less likely to notice it's, it's been assumed. And then maybe you can talk to my friends. See what other services I've got linked up to that service. So... And that then therein it starts to get dubious. Is he texting on Slack like, "Hey, all right, I don't, I don't want to play anymore." <laughs> Come on, guys, stop. <laughs> all right, so cafe, they, cafe. What's that? Uh, Found on Bike Journal. Yeah, these are just people that have the same. Okay, similar so username. these are anybody. Yeah, but these are. So this might not be him. This is anybody with the username that he gave us that's attached to you. Now, is it most likely our target because they have the same user? Probably, but again, you still wanna know who your target is and know who you're attacking because Blue Fox, the grandma who's super sexy, she's not the one we're targeting right now. We're targeting our friend in Slack. So we don't want to target sexy abuela because she didn't do anything to you, man. She's just trying to feed you and have you call her more often. Don't be mean to grandma. Right. So, so but, these are just some of the examples of tools. I don't know if we want to hunt hunt our friend all day. I'm I'm down to shove his username into a couple more things if you guys want to. But I think you kind of get the point. Um, wherever you get 
a little bit of information here or there. We were able to confirm that his email address he gave us is, in fact, a usable email. And then we were able to uh, use that his, username. He's saying it's not his Instagram. So. Of course, that's what, he's, <laughs> that's what I'd say, too. But it, has, uh, it probably is some sexy grandma <laughs> out there. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. I don't know who that was. Okay, so. How, is it beer clock? Oh, it's so beer. Yeah. It's totally beer clock. Yeah. Is your beer clock. So again, um, if you have any questions or if you'd just like to sit down and uh, find some playtime to do this, I'm always down to sit with you with your machine and your targets and talk about what you want to do about that. Um, I'm always down to sit and learn. Uh, by no means am I an expert and always excited to learn new things and hunt new people. Oh yeah, and Buscador, by the way, it just means searcher in Spanish. It is not like buscador. It sounds so like ominous and sexy, but it just means like looker in Spanish, which like us in South Florida, which actually kind of opened my mind a little bit because I thought to myself, damn, these are the English tools. What's out there for the other languages? Well, I want to know what tools the Russians are using for OSINT. I want to use, I want to like use Chinese OSINT tools. And I thought about it. Our tools are aimed at our web. And I know it's all the same web, but it really isn't. But actually, Basil talks about uh, different country search engines in his book. Hundred so, percent, he so does. Different sections, yeah. Uh, different um, search engines. But there's going to be a whole for book countries. for just the different countries, yeah. like you know, because our tools are aimed at our web um, with like .dot coms or .dot what you know, and other webs are not configured. I mean, I know it's all the same web, but then I thought to myself, damn, what about targeting people from other countries, other languages? There's an entire tool set that goes with that too. And then I just got super excited about seeing our Hack Madrid brothers and sisters when they come from Spain to, to give their talks at Hack Miami. So that's going to be really cool. Yeah. So. so remember, Hack, so thank you. Yay! Thank you, honey. Thank you. Thanks. I hope you got something useful. I hope you got a little creeped out because it is cre it's a creepy skill yeah yeah and just just so um, so Rod hears it and everyone else knows Hack Miami conference coming up May 17 18 talks are uh, there's training classes that are done on the Friday on the 17th con is done on the 18th there's gonna be two two main rooms and our th and our penthouse room which is gonna have the capture the flag capture the packet Lockpick Village and Fire Talks as well, and plenty of talks on there. Prices going at one fifty one fifty nine ninety nine. Yeah. Register, please, and uh, let's have a good uh, con. All right. Yeah. And if you guys are interested in, um, there's no hotel block because it's not an overnight thing. But I think I might stay at the hotel anyway, just because like it was pretty cool last time. And then we have a central place to party and hang out after the con. Um, if there's other people who are interested in maybe trying to to get rooms, maybe we can all get rooms on the same floor or something like that, so we can have like a centralized area. I don't know what you're into, but I'm open for that discussion, and I'm always open for the discussion of driving to DefCon and renting like a hacker van and and going out there big time. I know that'd be like an epic drive, but maybe for one day. Also, remember this is our last Hack Miami conference on the at beach. Miami Beach on the beach, so. So, yeah, so yeah, I know, yay yeah, and nay, yay and nay, but the beach has yeah. gone like nuts and it's starting to get hard for us to like party out there. And last year with the penthouse, like we, we weren't even allowed to use the bathroom at like some point and I was like, okay, well fuck this man, if we can't even bring in our own alcohol, like, come on man, like, this is a hacker con. Okay, my bad, my bad, <laughs> Just my bad, my bad. I respect yeah. and love the hotel and I'm sorry to break down. <laughs> Thank you for housing us. <laughs> we love the Doville. All right. Is it the Doville again? Where are we again? Oh, the Seacoast. The Doville burned down. Hashtag not hack Miami. But now we're at Seacoast Suites, which I think was beautiful last year, and I had fun. So, or yeah, last year. Those rooms, were dude. And the suites, like if you split them with another person, you get your 